The Garden of Salvation raid has been cleared with its exotic revealed. Today, I'm going to show you how to get Divinity. Your mission starts at the raid entrance, but you need to go there on patrol. It's in the Lunar Battlegrounds, aka First Light, aka the very start of the Shadowkeep campaign. Go to Sorrow's Harbor and then follow along on screen. Once you get to the Vex Gate, you're going to fight three waves of Vex with the next wave spawning in after you've killed all of the previous adds. There is nothing special about this at all, you just kill stuff. Once everything is killed and you kill a boss that spawns, an exotic will drop on the ground. Pick it up to start your quest. You'll need to hit up three Lost Sectors on Nessus in order to get the core analyzed. The first is in the Orrery in Artifact's Edge. Before the main stairs to go up to the boss, jump up on the left side ledge to find a tiny alcove to walk in. You're going to interact with the oracle, some enemies are going to spawn, just kill them, and then interact again to get some progress. The next oracle is in Ancient's Haunt in the Tangle. The cave you'll be looking for is maybe about halfway up the Lost Sector, again just use the on-screen instructions, it's the same thing here as in the previous. The final node is in the Conflux Law Sector in the Cistern. About halfway through the Law Sector, you're going to jump up high on the right side of the area to find the Oracle in a room. The next part requires decryption cores, 120 of them from Vex enemies. You can do this via the Vex invasions on the moon or from the Vex offensive activity. If you choose to do the Vex offensive, there is a brief quest you'll need to complete in order to unlock it. Killing Vex will get you the cores that you need, so just keep killing until you have 120 cores. The next part is to gather up 30 Phantasmal Fragments at the Lectern next to Eris to turn them in for an Empowered Decryption Core. Phantasmal Fragments are dropped from Nightmare enemies, but they can also be bought for Helium Filaments from the Lectern. After this, it's time to hop into the raid. I'm still working on the raid guides and they will be worked on and uploaded after this video goes live very shortly afterwards, but if you are capable of beating the raid, then you can get the gun. There will be some minor spoilers for the raid in terms of actually seeing it and a lot of the locations within and all that, including the final chest room, but no boss encounters will be in this video. The raid contains seven puzzles, similar to an Outbreak Prime situation from Destiny 1, the monitors in the raid, although not nearly as crazy. I believe all of these need to be completed in the same raid. I don't think you can just do a couple of parts, leave and come back, or if you can, I have not personally tested that. I would just do it all in one raid. To activate the core, you'll spawn into the raid, turn around, and jump off the cliff to find a secret tunnel underneath where you spawn in. Activate this node in order to start. The first puzzle is before the first encounter. You're going to go up a big staircase that leads out into the open and then turn around to find two tiny alcoves, one on each side. If you're facing the stairs going up, the left side has the start and the right side the finish. The goal here is to chain the start of the tether from the left to the right. Three people will be on the left, three on the right. From here, it's a matter of orientating yourselves in a way that will get the tether where it needs to go. In the case of this first puzzle, it's a pretty simple zigzag pattern. The left side will start it, you chain the tether to player 2, 2 to 3, 3 will chain to 4 who is waiting in the right side alcove, 4 to 5 on a lower platform, 5 to 6, and then 6 into the node you drop the tether into. You'll know when you're done when you get a message to pop up.
The second puzzle is after the first encounter. When you loot your chest, you're going to turn around, and then you're going to drop down onto the right side of the area you're standing on. The right side being the side after turning around from the chest. Look for a tree with pink leaves. There will be a tiny cave to drop down into. The goal here is the same as before, chaining the tether around from start to finish. The area you drop into is the end of the chain, and as you walk through, you'll assign people to the following spots. Player one will just hang out where you first dropped in. Everyone else is going to go through the hole in the wall. Player two will hide in the right side hole here, and player three is around the left corner. Players four, five, and six should also go into the right side hole to drop down into the next section. Player four is going to take a very windy path to their spot. Follow instructions on screen. From player four's spot, turn around, go straight until you hit a wall, make a left, and then when you see the outside, you're going to dip into the cave along the left side of the wall. From there, run straight, hugging the right side for player five's location. Player six is going to go back the way they came to go outside. When you get outside, hook a left, and you're going to be taking the path all the way down and then making a left. Head into the big cave, and you'll see your starting tether box. You're going to activate it, make sure everyone is within proper line of sight of each other, and then you will unlock this puzzle. The wall breaks down here, and you can escape this area by taking the route player 6 took to get to their position, back outside, and then climbing up the wall to progress. Puzzle 3 is after the first encounter when you head into the platforming section of the raid. Head off to the right side of this play space. You're going to be looking for a big branch coming out of the ceiling that has a bunch of shootable pods around it. This puzzle is much more straightforward. Six nodes will appear in the space when you activate the tether. The goal here is to have the tether hit all of the nodes. Player 1 will start at the lower section next to the box. Players 2 and 3 will be on the leaves before this big branch, in our case to the left, and players 4, 5, and 6 will be on the big branch away from the group. Player 1 will activate the tether, which will then chain to players 2 and 3. Player 3 will chain to 4, and 4, 5, and 6 will get chained, and then will move into their positions next to their nodes. Player 6 will then link themselves to player 1 if they are within line of sight, and a circle of tethers will form among the players, which is what allows player one to jump to their node to complete the chain. When all six nodes light up, you're good. Puzzle four and five are after the third encounter. A tether box will spawn to the east of the mini jumping puzzle tunnel thing. Activating it will spawn six nodes. This puzzle works the exact same way as puzzle three. All nodes need to be hit. When all six people are tethered, Players 1 and 6 will also link themselves together, and then you can all move as a group in a blob. The way my team did it was by making a circle of people and carefully jumping over the pillar to make a ring around it. While funny, this is not the best way. You should set people up in a way that resembles our position in this video after we do our jump strategy, and then start building the chain. Do not break line of sight with each other. Then you're just going to jump a whole bunch of times to get those final nodes in the air. Titan's probably best for this.
Puzzle 5 is activated in the same way. Player 1 starts, you chain it to everyone. Player 6 links back to player 1 automatically, and then you move. As a group, you need to get to the other side of the jumping puzzle tunnel, but you can all just take the path to the left of it and then go around. Now, I think you're going to enjoy this next puzzle more on the first try if I don't tell you what happens next. So just give it a shot without watching the video first. I'll give you a few seconds just for spoiler reasons. Okay, so if you want it spoiled, or you already did it, Supplicant Harpies will spawn in during this time. Supplicant Harpies self-destruct. You need to bait these harpies into exploding, but not killing anybody. So you'll stand near one, wait for it to start exploding, and then back away. And then rinse repeat for all of them. Then you're going to make a little bow tie shape kind of thing with all six players on each node in order to solve this puzzle. This one's pretty simple. Puzzle 6 is also after the third encounter, after the wall climb. You'll walk into this big field and walk towards the waterfalls in the back. In between the two waterfalls is a cave. The start node is down a path to the left. You need to shoot it in order to spawn the end node, which is towards the beginning up on the wall. The chains you need to make here need to be as long as they can go between players before breaking. And that's really about it. It's not very difficult. The final puzzle is where puzzle 6 started. There will be 6 plates on the ground. When you chain everyone together to start the puzzle, 2 nodes will appear. These 2 nodes will make a line pattern on the ground that your team needs to replicate very quickly. Assign everyone a number and have people step on the plates in order. In this example, Lunar is player 1, CC is 2, and I am 3. Lunar goes to the first plate that is being pinged. CC to the second, and myself to the third. You will repeat this process, you guessed it, seven times to complete the puzzle. Your reward waits for you after the final boss. If you hit every puzzle and did them correctly, and you know, you actually have the quest, you need the quest, you are rewarded with Divinity, AKA the trace rifle that makes a giant crit spot on stuff that you're shooting. I'm sure I'll be doing some testing with this thing in the near future, so stay tuned for more stuff involving this gun. Thank you very, very much to the Raid Secrets subreddit and Discord, along with some of my math class clanmates for putting in the time to solve this puzzle while I did literally nothing to contribute at all except make this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. So interact with the one on the right. I got the bond. Requires empowered decryption core. Oh, I didn't do it on this character. <laughs> <laughs> Are you...
Are you an asshole? Well, your chat's gone for the next hour, dude. <laughs>